All right, so we're in the left hallway here. This is going to be an interesting one because uh, there are four possible routes or four possible things to interact with. And you have a predetermined threshold of how many wrong interactions you can do. The main idea is that the person will be able to pass the game by trying at least three times to open the, the, the door all the way to the front of the hallway. It has three boards, so we'll have to tap it once to take one board off, tap it again to take another one off. Now, while they're tapping it, spikes are going to start emerging from the wall. So people will think, am I going the right way? Should I take the board off or not? Well, spikes are going to emerge as they're trying to go through the correct exit in the center. And they have three taps to take off all of those boards, and then they are free. Well, they might think uh, it might be easier to just climb up the attic door, requiring one click. No, that's also going to create more spikes coming out. They might think, well, maybe something's behind the painting. They might click that, more spikes. And then they might try the door with one board. Nope, more spikes. So the person has to figure out, probably through a second or third or more playthrough, that they have to go through the front, the door straight ahead, even though spikes are emerging. So we have the threshold of how many boards have been taken off that door, and uh, do you reach that threshold before reaching the threshold of too many spikes, you're impaled. So that's what this um, that's what this scene will be about. This will take us to a good ending if they can open that main door. It'll take us to a bad ending if they hit the threshold of too many spikes. And then once that's done, well, the main coding of the main navigation of the game is done, and then we will do the sound. I want to put background music to the different scenes. Uh, music, of course, is a great way to set a mood in any game or movie. And so I've got some sounds already for you here that'll work great with this scary type of a game. Obviously, on your game, it doesn't have to be a haunted house or whatever like we're doing here. It should be like what the big idea of what your previous projects were. So if you're on an alien planet navigating a cave, if you're in an animified world, you're navigating that. If you are a uh, like a kangaroo delivery person, okay, you've got to do that. If you're a surfer girl, okay, there's something there. So all of you should be doing a version of what you've previously done for this adventure thing. Uh, I guess I won't uh, deduct any points if you just do a haunted house, but that's kind of boring, right? You want to do a house that you want to do a location that is what is based on your previous projects. And I try to grade as much as possible on the technical aspect of things, not the artistry of it. So you could get a good grade if you just do stick figures as opposed to fully rendered characters, as long as you've meeting all, you're meeting all the requirements. The code works, uh, you have the appropriate number of scenes, etc. as part of the rubric of the assignments. So grading should not be a surprise about what grade you get, as long as you're uh, following the requirements. And yes, you can still turn in late work. And yes, you can resubmit previously graded work for a better grade. But remember, your time is very limited. Next Wednesday is the last day of in-class meeting. So we have a week from today after we finish the lecture. So let's finish the lecture. Uh, I'm on scene uh, three, hall left. I've got the left hallway. Let's open up our action script let's see where do we leave off we turned all of these into symbols good and we've uh, given them all instance names let's look at our actions panel and let's see what we've got on actions uh, hall painting left uh, okay good so here Zooming in, here's what we've got. So all where we left off is we, um, we have two variables that are keeping track of th two thresholds. At about line 6 and 11, I've got center door tugs and all object tugs. They're both set to zero, two thresholds. Now, the center door then has an event listener waiting for that to be tapped. Once it is, it increments the center door tugs and the all objects. The painting on the left is going to increment only all objects. Now I want 
all the items on the screen to be incrementing all objects. Because if this one, if all objects reaches a threshold, too many spikes, you're dead. So I also want to make the other objects increment the variable. So the painting on the left is BTN hall left painting. The door there is BTN hall left door right. Uh, so what we want to do is set all of those objects to pay attention to um, getting clicked on to increment the counter. So here's what we can do. Right after line 22, we'll add another event listener, this time for the hall left door right. Um, I want to add the, basically the exact same event listener. You can just copy it. You can copy the one of the painting and add it there. So now the door is also clickable, and that door will also trigger uh, increasing the all object tugs, increasing the possibility of getting spiked. So I want to do that also to the attic door, which we probably call BTN hall left attic door. That needs the exact same event listener. So all three of them can have the exact same listener running the exact same function. Because all three of them, I want to incre increment the, the, the object tug there to lead us to the spikes. And just to confirm, the, hall, the attic, yes, it's BTN hall left attic door, yeah. OK, so now everything is clickable. Three things respo uh, respond to being clicked to run the same function. And one thing increments the good variable, you could say. OK, well, oops. Yeah, I hit the keyboard wrong. <laughs> Uh, so what we want to do here then is uh, we're going to have a, a two conditional statements on the condition that the bad variable increases to the threshold, you're dead. On the condition that the good variable increases to the good threshold, you live. So we'll do the bad one first. That one's a little easier. Uh, inside of the FN all object tugs before the end of that line, let's add a new line. And we will create here conditional statement to check if we've reached the bad threshold. We can back up for a little moment, and if you'd like, you can also note all objects tug is the bad threshold. So you can maybe note it up there if you want bad threshold. Whereas the other variable that we set up there, the center door, that's the good ver the good threshold. Just to uh, note it completely. Okay, conditional statement. That means it's going to check on a certain condition. If a certain thing happens, a certain result happens. Either this result or that result. Basically, two possibilities. So either we've reached a threshold, we're dead, or we haven't reached a threshold, we're fine. OK, so that's set up with if, parentheses, curly braces, or else, curly braces. You can say end of if else to check um, bad threshold. What we're checking is if all object tugs is greater than 3. This number can be whatever you want. I'm going with 3. They have, the, they have to tap uh, 3 times to remove those boards. So more than 3 here. So if they try then a fourth tap, whoops, they're, they're dead. On yours, you could have it that it's more involved than that. After 7 or 12 or whatever amount of number, if it gets past that threshold, then you die. And dying is simply that it goes to the bad ending. So this is, as usual here, the go to and play to take us to the bad ending.
frame movie chip. Oh, I, I guess I'm hungry. <laughs> movie clip. A tasty error. Scene four ending bad is what we called it. Yeah, scene four ending bad. Okay, so if we've tapped the wrong thing too many times, we go to the bad ending. We can save it and test it at this point, just to confirm this works so far. Nothing on screen will really identify what's going wrong yet, but try it. Go to the left hallway, tap on um, everything besides the center door. We're not, we're not dealing with that one yet. So tap everything besides the center door, and then eventually it should take you to the bad ending. And we're going to make spikes up here in a moment. We've got movie clip this route. Go to and play frame one of the bad ending. So we haven't added very much code. It shouldn't cause any errors, but double check your spelling. See, this is loading up on my own tablet. Let me confirm. So I'm going to play, go through the gate. I'm then going to throw the rock. I'm going to go left. I'm going to hit the attic, the right door, the painting, one more, dead. So spikes will start to emerge in just a moment, but at least it should be that, yes, you tap on four mm. things besides the center door, and it will take you to the bad ending. I can then replay, try again, and again. If you just tap the painting four times, you should get that same result. You can tap any one of them four times, and it'll take you to the bad ending to confirm. So I'll just test it one more time. I'll tap the attic four times. Yep, so it should work. Uh, anyone having any trouble, it should get you to the bad ending if you tap four times on anything. Okay, well, internally the logic of it works in that after we reach the threshold we go to the bad ending. Visually, then, we need to have some sort of peril happening to the, the player on screen, which is going to be spikes are going to start to emerge from the walls. So this is going to be a movie clip that has the animation of spikes coming in. But we're only going to play a little bit of the movie clip at a time. They tap once, spikes emerge a little bit. They tap again, a couple more spikes. Tap again, a few more three times if they've tapped the center um, uh, door enough spikes stop there they proceed if they're tapped anywhere else the spikes go all the way and they get you so we're gonna have a movie clip of spikes that will play little by little as they click wrong before we add the code let's set up the spikes so I want to do this by um, locking all of the layers and creating a new layer called spikes. I'm putting the spikes layer above the background. You can call that background if you want. Lock all of the um, lock all of the layers except for spikes. And I'm going to have the spikes emerging from different parts of the, of the design, something like this. I'm going to get my brush tool this way first. I'm going to sort of put like some markers where they're going to come from eventually from outside of the scene, somewhere outside.
So like those are going to be like the holes where they're going to come from, draw them outside of the scene for the moment, and then we're going to have them coming in through the different parts of the, of the uh, hall. I've got only six indicators at the moment, but I'm going to add more spikes than that. I just need something to create a symbol for and then animation. So uh, I want to select all of, the sp all of the little spike spots at once. And a fast way to do it is if you uh, do uh, Control A, selects everything. And then when you uh, select that, that object, we'll press F8. So basically, select all of those starting point spike portals or whatever, select them all and press F8 so we can create an MC Spikes movie clip. So all of the starting points where the spikes will come from are selected, converted to MC Spikes movie clip. Okay, so we've got an object that should span across the whole scene and um, just putting these like little markers where the spikes are going to come from was just enough for us to then create the movie clip and then start to animate the actual spikes. So um, let's double click that symbol we just created. So we're editing the the timeline of the symbol. And what we're going to do is animate spikes coming out a little bit, then a little bit more, and then a lot more and such. So the way we'll do this is <clears throat> I'll go to frame 2, F6, and then now I can sort of start to draw spikes starting to come into the scene. Just a little bit. I want him to poke through the... Um, through the walls a little bit now. I'm also going to draw them like they're coming from over here and over here. You're free to get creative over here. And you might not know exactly where you're going to put all of this stuff at the moment, and, and that's fine. You'll figure it out as you as you work with the project. So we're in the we're in the room, and then spikes emerge a little bit. I'm going to skip two frames over F6. I'm going to draw them coming out a bit more. How much you draw them out is up to you. There's more peril when there's more spikes. So first frame, nothing. Second frame, a little bit of spikes. Third frame, more spikes. I'll jump two frames over, F6, draw them out even more. So first click, a little bit of spikes, second click, more spikes, third click, looking worse. Hopefully by that point then they've figured out to tap the center um, door enough and then they're free. Oops, they didn't figure it out, so the final set of spikes. Jump over two more frames, frame eight, and then draw them 
completely stabbed up. Now, of course, I'm going to fill it in with good color, and we're going to add some sound, uh, little spiky uh, blade sounds later. And if you want to fully animate them, right now I'm just doing each spike out a little bit. You can be more creative and animate them even more as you work on your version. But the point here is I have four keyframes. Remember the, the black dots are keyframes. The first keyframe where nothing is happening. The second keyframe with a little bit of spikes, third keyframe, fourth, and fifth. So obviously, this is going to animate the spikes in and out over and over unless we stop the animation. We're going to put stop commands in every one of those keyframes because I don't want the spikes to come out until they hit the wrong door, spikes come out a little bit, it animates to the next keyframe, and then it stops there. They hit the wrong door again, it animates, but then it stops on the next one. So make a new layer called Actions. In the Actions layer, you can add your stop command. So after you draw, after you add your stop command on frame one, right-click, copy the frame. The Control C, Control V doesn't work for frames, so you want to right-click, copy the frame, and then right-click, paste the frame in your actions layer right above the keyframe of your spike, frame two, and then also then right-click and paste on the keyframe right above your other spike. So add the stop command. This has got multiple stop commands every time that the spikes emerge. Every time the spikes emerge, there is a stop there so that the animation can stop at that point. There's more blades on screen. They're coming out. Now we will have to change the code that we wrote a moment ago on the main timeline just a little bit because, again, the speed of this, 24 frames per second, this final shot of the spikes all the way through will last for 1 24th of a second. So we're going to need to change that code in, in just a moment. Let's see if we can see why in a moment. But we've got this animation then of spikes emerging. And when we go back to the main timeline, hall left, and go to the actions layer. Actually, before we go to the actions layer, this movie clip of the spikes in the main timeline needs an instance name so that in the code we can have it play to get to the next set of spikes. So select your spikes uh, movie clip in the main timeline. Let's give it an instance name. OBJ spikes is an object. It has an instance name we'll write our action script code to then have it further the spikes come out every time they hit the the wrong door obj obj spikes so now we'll go to the actions and where we're at over here in the all objects tug if we reach the threshold, they're dead. Move them to that, uh, to that um, final destination, or else play those spikes. 
rpgspice.play. So try it out. Save it and try it on your device. And uh, we confirmed a little while ago that if you do tap the wrong door, it will eventually kill you. But now we've got something, some visuals showing those spikes emerging. So save that, try it on your device, and see if you do tap on the wrong door and see if it does have those spikes emerging. device so I'm gonna go to play gate rock left door I'm gonna to try to open up the boarded door tap it once oops spikes are coming out maybe I should go behind the painting Oop, more spikes uh, what about the attic more spikes right there uh, I don't know let me try one more time oops I'm dead so you should see <coughs> the spikes emerge you can of course tweak that to have more Animation, less animation, whatever. Right now, the main central door doesn't do it just yet. We'll have that in a moment. We'll pause right there. Did that work? Are you seeing that sort of result? Anyone need some help? Okay, so technically here, question? Not working? As far as that go to the last one. can go to the last animation or the dead It can either one. That's the final one. Okay, that seems fine. Let's go look at your main
And I was so like, yeah, it's like, I was at the door too, because I kept so telling you, I was questioning myself. It's just like, all right. So I was like, I think I think I All right, we'll go on in just a moment. Anyone having any trouble having this work? All right, so let's go on right here. So what we want to do, um, let's, if we think about it like this, we've got on line 30, if all objects tug is greater than 3, we, we die. But it may not fully play the animation that you set up in your spikes. So it would be better to put this about your dead in the symbol of the spikes. Have the have the spikes emerging, but then um, have it happen in the spike. So we still want, however, to to increment to increment it. So we'll leave the else there. I'm going to copy that line and let's comment it out. And we'll say uh, moved to the M or what did we call it? OBJ spikes symbol to happen after the animation. I believe what we also need here, and we can check it in a moment, we also need the OBJ spikes to, to still play, to still get us to the point in the spikes where it will then move us to the bad ending. So if we get past the level of clicks, it will it will play the animation, it will play over to frame whatever, let's say 20, and at frame 20 is where it will then do the part we commented out about moving to bad ending. So let's go to our spikes. And here's the idea. We've only got eight frames of animation here, but I want the final frame of it to show that we're all spiked up. I want that to show for a moment, you know, at least one second. So if I'm on frame 8 and we're running at 24 frames per second, what frame should that be then? 24 plus 8. 32. 32. So frame 32, let's press F5 on the spikes layer. Now the final frame is visible for one second. Because it ended on frame 8, we had 24 frames because there's 24 frames per second. So there's a pause of one second when the spike is visible. Maybe you want it longer, that's fine. Then just add 24 more frames for one more second, or 12 frames for half a second. Just a little math. Well, on that final frame of 32, on the actions layer, F7, that's where you're going to then paste in the, the go to bad ending. Now it has a moment where you see on screen you're all spiked up. Pause for a second. Then it plays here. Move the uh, timeline over to the bad ending. Give that one a try. It'll be slightly different. Uh, a little better, I believe, in that you're tapping the different uh, wrong doors, and you will see the spikes emerge. And then after a moment, they will emerge completely. Pause for a moment, and then take you to game over. So go ahead and test it and see see the difference.
question? Oh, sometimes I do that just to, when I zoom in like that, I can't show everything. So I wanted to show that we're in the actions layer, frame 32, and that's the code, but I just pressed enter to just show it in the, in the zoomed in view. I'm going to change it back to line one in a moment. Okay, so let's see here. On mine, it's running. Play, open the gate, throw the rock, go left, tap the door, tap the door, tap the door, trying to open the door, can't open the door, paused, and then, and then, that should have gone a little faster, but let me just check that one more time. So let's see here. I think, oh, okay, I know why. Uh, I don't think we need this final stop right here. Yep, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, we have a stop on the last animation. When the spikes are fully extended, we have a stop there. So, uh, of course, it doesn't then progress to the next one. So, whoops, go ahead and remove your stop on frame 8. Right there, so that should be fully correct. We don't need a stop. We needed a stop there a moment ago to uh, show the spikes, but now we're using the timeline to have a little bit of actual pause time, so we don't need a uh, stop uh, command on frame eight anymore. That's why you beta test. So let's see on mine. Okay, so I play that, go through the gate. Throw the rock, left hallway, door one click, two, three, four, paused. Now I think it's a little short, but anyway, it's paused there at the final. Yes. So make sure you've got the play the spikes on both the if and both the else. So just for myself, I think those spikes are visible a little too short. So I will go back and extend it out to two seconds. That's just for me. I think it doesn't pause long enough. So on frames, on frame 48 of both layers, I've moved over the final action and the final frame to frame 48 so that there's a little bit longer of a pause to see the spikes are out. One second is shorter than you think. Okay, if we've got the bad threshold set up, the good threshold will be very similar, but it'll have one new thing. Where right now we've dealt with a conditional statement of two possibilities, if else. Uh, we can actually set ourselves up to check three conditions, or 30 conditions. So we're going to use an else, um, an else plus if else, so extra conditions. Let's go back to the main timeline. Actions layer. Well, let me add one more comment here before we, we do the, the good threshold. Right above here, we're saying um, three objects. 
trigger the same function after a tap. So these three here are three different objects, but they're all triggering the same the same result. Okay then, for the center door tug, we're going to do something very similar but with an extra check. Check if we've reached the good threshold and check if we've reached the bad threshold. So after that trace, we'll say conditional statement with three, three checks. It starts off also with if, but instead of ending with else, it continues with another else if with its own pair of parentheses and curly braces, and then one final else. End of if, else, if, to check three possibilities. So be careful there about the parentheses and the curly braces. There's the usual pair of curly braces for if. Then we've got else, but then right away, if, and there is a space there, else, space, if. It, that if then has parentheses, and then curly brace right there, which then ends the final usual else. So that final else is like if all else fails. When we, when we only have an if else, we're checking one thing, we didn't get that thing, it failed, so else kicks in. Now we've got the ability to check if this thing, or what about this thing, or if that fails, or else. So this is what I'm saying, that it could be multiple checks. So don't write this, but it could be this as well. It could be another else if here, as many as you want. So don't write this one. But now here I'm checking four things. Check if it's this, great, do the stuff in this block. Or else, if, let's check this. If it's this one, great, do the stuff in this block. If it's not, jump to the final one. Or another check, is it, is it this true or false here? If it is, then do that. And then if all of these fail, if we didn't hit any of these conditions, then it must be that final else. So that's four possibilities. We're only going to do three, but I'm just showing you there you can add as many else ifs together as you want. So the first thing we're going to check, did we reach the good threshold, which is center door tug, tugs greater than three. So it's going to be three tugs on the center door that get us through, or three tugs anywhere else that kill us. So then we also check that. On the second else if, all object tugs greater than three. So we're saying, did we reach the, the good threshold, yes or no? Yes, do line, do line 22. No, OK, check. Did we reach the bad threshold, yes or no? Yes, do line 24. No, do line 26. Well, this final else here is uh, going to be that we, the object of spikes plays. And also the else if. will be a little bit different here that we don't uh, we don't have set up yet is I also want to animate the planks coming off of the center door so that has an instance name of BTN hall left door center 
and it doesn't have frames of animation yet. We'll add a play there. Well, if we reach the, the good threshold, that's going to take us to scene for ending good. That's the point there. If we did reach, if we tried to open the center door enough times, we reached that threshold, great, move us to the good ending, finally. I get to the pot of gold, or whatever ending you set up on the good ending. If we haven't reached that threshold, that good threshold, then uh, play the spikes. And then we will play the board coming off of the um, door. Or else um, play the spikes. So that means we need to add some frames of animation on our on our central door of those boards being removed. From here we will go edit our, cent our center door object and add a few simple frames of animation to remove those planks, those boards. So I'm going to go back to the main timeline. I'm going to double click to edit the center door. For the center door here, I'm going to put a few, a few frames of animation. So uh, I'll jump over two frames to frame three, F6. I'll draw the door a little bit different. I'll, I'll draw a plank on the floor. So then that requires I, let's see, that requires I remove the plank. Easier with just erasing. Yeah. Exactly. There we go. Not erase because then it'll make it transparent. Just paint, just paint it over. Depending how complex you made it, I'm trying to get too fancy.
Okay, so that's one frame. If they tap the central door, one plank will fall. I'll jump over two more frames, F6, draw the next plank down. Okay, so first frame without any changes, next frame, one plank is down, next frame, the next plank is down. Third frame, jump, jump two frames over F6 and then draw the final one. And depending on how complexly you drew this, of course, it'll be easy to fix or not. Maybe I got too fancy and I have to fix too many lines on mine. Yeah, that, that's fun. That's a, that's a smarter way. Make a board of a certain, uh, certain symbol and then just put different versions and rotate them and scale them and such.
Well, this symbol is somewhat related to the spike symbol in that it animates as the spikes emerge. Therefore, we need to stop the animation every time it, um, it, uh, it gets taken off. And just like the spikes, at a certain point, all of the spikes get through. We pause for a moment to see the spikes, then it's the good ending. So we'll have to do that here as well in a moment. But uh, probably for me, I will say line thir uh, frame 35, F5. I want to pause and display the opened up door for a moment up to frame 35, it's about one and a half seconds. And I want to add the stop actions. So I want stop on each one of these, except the final one. Just like in the um, just like in the spikes, there's a blank keyframe where the final animation is at, but then where it all ends on frame 35, that's where I need the movie clip go to good ending. So the same thing, I'm going to get it from the if else if statement and then put it in here. So there's a stop action on each of those keyframes except seven. And I need to go back to the main timeline and copy this that said center door greater than three. Uh, I need to copy that, comment it out, but I do need a way for, for the door to get us to that result. So that's going to need a play. Actually, I think we need, we'll confirm it in a moment, but I think we need to have the the door, the center door, play on all of those three possibilities. Because they, they hit the center door on their first hit, okay, remove one plank. They hit it on the second one, remove another plank. They hit it enough times, it keeps removing planks until it gets greater than three. When it's greater than three, it then plays the center door, the final frame of it, where it um, will have the go to good ending. So I'm comment commenting it out here because I can then copy and paste it into the final frame of the spikes. Okay, so that will be when you go to your center door frame 35. After a little bit of pause of the boards being on the floor, then we've got here the go to and play ending good.
Okay, so when this runs on my device, play, open the main gate, throw the rock, left hallway, try to open the center door, tap it once, spikes will emerge. I do want that. I want people to be still like, well, what's going on? Well, I, I tore down one, uh, one board, but spikes are coming. Okay. Tap it again. I took off another board. Um, it looks like I'm getting through the door, but more spikes are coming. I hit it again. More spikes emerge. All the, the planks are down. It paused for a moment that all the planks were down. Maybe too short again, so I'll give it more time. Then I went to the U-Win. These buttons don't work because we haven't gotten to that scene, but that's going to be exactly like the good scene, or the bad ending scene, that is. But that should go then to the good ending. So I think I'm going to pause for a little bit longer here. I'll do it for the two seconds as well. So I'm going to select those final frames and put them at two seconds to show it for a little longer.